pitch on the way, swinging a high drive deep to right field. This one is going and going and goodbye baseball upper deck in right field. Welcome to September, Kyle Seeger. Rick Riz, the radio voice of the Mariners. You've heard him. You know him. You love him. He's joining us now. Do you often get to hear your play-by-play calls like that? Uh, well, not, not very often, uh, but, uh, you know, during the course of the year, you hear highlights, especially driving home after a ball game. So get, I guess I do, John. Yeah. Do and you? then uh, a lot of the games that are being replayed, you know, every night hear, on our flagship station. I hear some broadcasters who say, you know, they don't want to hear it. I hear others that just pour over everything. Have you changed throughout your career? Because you've been at this a long time and you're good at it. Oh, well, thank you, John. Uh, no, I still get a kick out of it. It's always nice to, you know, hear your play-by-play and hear your work. And uh, and, and I listen to it and kind of critique myself. I, you know, I, I, I drive it home. I go, you know, could I have done that any better? You know, what could I have done to set it up a little bit better? So I kind of think of it, you know, that way. But uh, it's, always, oh, it's always fun to hear yourself. And uh, I, th- I think it's a good thing. I'm talking to Rick Riz, the Mariners radio voice. Um, there is something going on that's really cool, and I'm going to tell listeners how to get a couple of tickets uh, to a Mariners game. The Mariners have made a generous offer. They're offering two tickets uh, to everybody who donates blood as part of their the blood drive that is going on uh, at Bloodworks. has got a, a remote location set up at Coyote's Bar and Grill on Baseline Road in Hillsboro. It is beginning today. Uh, May 7th, the May 11th, there will also be there, uh, 12 uh, to 6 p.m., May 14th, May 18th, May 21st, May 25th, May 28th. So you have an opportunity here. Uh, if you go to uh, bloodworksnw.org, you can look at the donation schedule. You have an opportunity to get a couple of tickets and help people out. Rick, why is it important uh, that people donate blood? And, and, by the way, thanks to the Mariners for, for stepping up to incentivize it and make it cool uh, in addition to the to the good thing that it is. Yeah, John, this is so important right now. Uh, the Mariners opened up T-Mobile Park on April 13th, and it was so successful that they're continuing it through the, the month of May. And why is it so important? Well, because of the pandemic, uh, COVID-19 and uh, um, you know, the coronavirus, you know, all the hospitals were inundated with patients trying to save lives and, and uh, elective surgeries were put on the back burner. And so now there's a little bit more of a grip on things and uh, we're starting to open up, you know, our state a little bit and your state and also now the hospitals. So now these elective surgeries for cancer treatment or any other type of surgeries, uh, uh, transplants, they need blood. And uh, from what I've read and understand from Bloodworks is that uh, 60% of the blood supply is collected at mobile blood drives. Well, those uh, have been stopped with uh, because a lot of them are at schools and schools are closed and things like that. So there's going to be this big influx with now elective surgeries opening up that people and hospitals need blood, all types of blood. So if we can get out there and donate blood and, 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 and uh, you know, build up that reservoir so the elective surgeries can take place here, in the very, very near future, uh, it's going to be great because we have to need to build up that supply. So stop by uh, Coyote's Bar and Grill at that address, 5301 West Baseline Road in Hillsboro, and donate blood, and we're doing the same out at T-Mobile Park. But uh, it's very, very essential right now because of what we're going through. For uh, people age 16 and up who meet the donation weight and eligibility requirements, uh, yeah, obviously, if you're under 18, you have to have a permission form signed, but 16 and up can donate. I didn't know this, Rick, but um, I found out from, you know, just doing some research on this that, uh, you know, the blood supply, it, it's perishable. Uh, and platelets have a shelf life of only five days. So there is a need, and it's why donors are needed yeah. every day. And so, uh, you know, I've given blood, and you can do it five to six times a year, but I think it's a great opportunity for people to do a good thing safely do it because blood works has done a great job in in uh, sort of uh, honoring social distancing and following rules but also making it very easy for people with the mobile location to give blood and the mariners have stepped up to to incentivize it a little bit because there's nothing better than getting two free tickets to a mariners game in addition to doing something good are you are you eager yeah, to that, yeah go ahead 
Yeah, no, this is wonderful. No, yeah, I'm eager as well. I know Dan Wilson went uh, the other day, and I plan on going. And, uh, you know, during difficult, very difficult trying times like this, you know, we find uh, real humanity. We, we we rise to the occasion. We're resolute and, and battling through all kinds of serious situations. And this is as serious as it gets with so many people dying in our state, in your state, across the country and around the world. So uh, this is something that where the people really step up and we really see the uh, humanity of people to try to help others. And, and that's that's why this is so great, uh, to help out those in need, especially the, our first responders, our doctors and nurses, EMTs, paramedics, caregivers in nursing homes, and so many other people. I mean, they're putting their lives on the line right now. So we need to stay safe and healthy and stay at home and make sure we don't add to those numbers. But coming up here real soon, the hospitals are going to need that blood for the people who have been waiting on the sidelines to get their elective surgeries because, you know, the hospitals uh, were just swamped with uh, trying to keep uh, people alive, you know, affected by the coronavirus. So uh, this is it's, it's an amazing um, thing when you can see the, the community really open up for uh, a cause that uh, that we really, really need to help out here in and uh, so if you can, stop on by and uh, donate blood as soon as you can. We're talking to the Mariners radio play-by-play voice, uh, Rick Riz. Uh, and again, for people who want to do that, you can go to bloodworksnw.org, or you can just stop by uh, the Bloodworks pop-up donor center uh, at Coyote's Bar and Grill, 5301 West Baseline Road in Hillsboro. It's open today until 6 p.m., so get yourself there. Uh, Rick, how eager are you to see baseball? What you know, all these theories that are floating around. You'll play, play in Arizona, won't play with fans. Um, where, do, what, what have you heard lately? And as a uh, somebody who's close to this team, uh, what's the sentiment internally with players? Well, I think the players want to play, but uh, I'm not sure they were too thrilled, possibly on the the bubble situation in Arizona because they would be pretty isolated in the hotels without their families. I don't have all the information on that, but uh, that was just one of the options. And there's also the option of uh, breaking down the entire country, all 30 clubs into three divisions, the East, Central, and the West. And we would just play everybody in the West, or flights would be short, and we could, you know, uh, get tested every week and make sure everybody was safe and healthy as well, but and play in our own ballparks. So uh, uh, we'll just have to wait and see. I'm, I'm kind of getting the same information, John, as you are right now and everybody else and all the fans. So we're waiting to see if uh, we can pull this off. Hopefully we can, but the main thing is we've got to be safe. We can undo everything we've done over the last two months. So we got to make sure that uh, the, uh, the detection of the COVID-19 virus, uh, coronavirus, doesn't escalate and go back up. We need to cut down, you know, obviously the deaths in our communities and states and the world, and we, we have to be safe. So it'll be interesting to see what happens and when it happens. Uh, but I'm here at home uh, staying safe, and uh, I take my daily walks and uh, enjoy the sunshine right now. But uh, hopefully we can get a bigger grip on this thing and maybe one day get back to playing baseball real soon because the fans are, are waiting for it. I'm anxious for it as well. I mean, I watched the NFL draft, John. I watched all three days of that thing because it was some kind of sports on TV. I watched every guy who was drafted, you know. But uh, And also the games that we're playing on our flagship station every night. And uh, so uh, I think fans are excited about getting baseball back. When that's going to happen, well, hopefully in the near future. But, again, we have to be safe about it. I've seen some of these play-by-play calls where uh, some of these broadcasters are, uh, you know, watching the dog and doing a play-by-play of the dog chasing the ball. <laughs> yeah. How do you yeah. stay in shape as a broadcaster uh, when there's no games? Uh, well, I-, I saw those two. The one the one English guy, the soccer guy with, with the two dogs, you know, and the dog was just sitting there and-, and thinking about making a move, and he was getting all excited. That was hilarious. Uh, I'm just uh, saying, I'm just watching baseball games, uh, just doing what I do every off season. I don't practice. We do so many games during the regular season that once we get down to spring training, we start doing games, John. It's like we never left from the previous year, and that's how fast the seasons meld one into another. This is going to be my 46th year coming up, eight years in the minor leagues, 38th year in the big leagues, and 
So I'm just kind of, I haven't, uh, I got my son's cat here that I've been babysitting every day for the last uh, three weeks or so. I could start doing play-by-play of him running around having a good time, but uh, I don't think anybody would be interested in that. But I'm just staying ready by, you know, watching what's going on and keeping track of uh, the latest news and things like that. But I just can't wait till we get down there and start playing some games quick because we're going to need about, you know, two and a half, three weeks of spring training for the pitchers to get ready, hitters get their timing down. So that'll give us plenty of time for us broadcasts to get ready as well, John. Yeah, and I, I kind of wonder how that false start will affect the pitchers because if I'm a pitcher who's coming in to spring training and I'm looking to make the big league roster, maybe I'm on the bubble, uh, you know, I'm really gearing towards being ready at spring training and and, oh, yeah. and impressing. And now you, you had this false start and it has to start back up again. I think it'll be interesting to see how that all manifests itself and – do we get a full season? Do we get a partial season? Are there fans in the stadium? How do you think it'll affect if there aren't fans in a baseball stadium? Yeah. And how? What's the difference there, atmosphere-wise, in in a game? Oh, it's going to be huge, John. You know, uh, the fans create the atmosphere. I can, you know, I've seen Edgar's double here four or five times. You know, watching on television the games that are replayed or, or listening on the radio of the game of that particular game. And Dave Niehaus set it up beautifully, but it was the crowd noise that you know, created the background and the atmosphere. It, it puts you on the edge of your seat. So it's going to be very strange to do a ball game with no fans in the stands. And uh, when somebody hits a grand slam home run, a grand salami, you know, you're just not going to have, you know, the reaction. Uh, you'll have our reaction, but it won't have that incredible background of fans going crazy. So it's going to be a whole lot different uh, without, uh, you know, fans at the ballpark. But, Hopefully we can, you know, uh, get closer to a cure and a vaccine and we get fans uh, sitting side by side and get 40,000 fans in a ballpark, uh, hopefully down the road. Rick Riz of the Seattle Mariners. He's the radio voice there. Rick, thank you for making time. I appreciate you. Oh, John, anytime. We thank you for what you do for us down there as one of our affiliates. Uh, Baseball will be back. I'm chomping at the bit, so is everybody else. Uh, we want to create some great memories uh, this year as we have down through the years. The first things first, uh, we have to think about uh, the first responders and make sure that they can do their jobs. So we need to do our job, stay healthy, stay safe, stay at home right now, open up when it's safe. And um, I can't wait till the baseball season has started and, and everything else and, and get our lives back once again. Rick Thank Riz. You. Thank you. There he is, Seattle Mariners radio voice. And for those of you who want to give blood and get two Mariners tickets, the Mariners pop-up donor center with Bloodworks is at Coyote's Bar and Grill in Hillsboro, 5301 West Baseline Road. They've made it safe. They're honoring social distancing today until 6 p.m., May 11th, 12 to 6 p.m., May 14th, 12 to 6 p.m., the 18th, the 21st, the 25th, and the 28th. The schedule at bloodworksnw.org. You get two Mariners tickets to every donor that donates blood to a select game, and they're going to do it because you, this is how they're going to do it. You're wondering, how are you going to get tickets for a game I don't know is when the schedule is? Well, the donor's going to get an email after you donate with a link to redeem your Mariners tickets. So if the game's canceled, they'll be redeemed. And you can go to a future game. It'll be all taken care of by the Mariners and after the donor completes the initial ticket registration. So uh, blood donations, go to bloodworksnw.org. If you've got questions, leave it here. you got the BFT.